to talk about how, how AI art generation works. And so at the end of this speech, we are going to know how AI creates art. Well, I'm really excited to hear about this. Please welcome Beth Bolhofer, how AI art generation works. That I think we're having some trouble. You're muted. Yeah, we are. Your volume's really low. I'm just going to go. How does that sound? Better. Sounds better. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Thank you all so much. I hope you guys can understand this subject really easily at the end of this presentation. So, can you guys see my slides? Yes. Okay, you cannot open up CNN or a newspaper if you still read those or anywhere without learning about AI art. So just by a show of hands, how many people have been have been exposed to this concept of AI art by now? Okay, yes, I see a lot of nodding people. All right, so the question is how does all this art work? That's the question. And my goal in this presentation is to explain this to a five-year-old. So welcome back to kindergarten, everyone. Everyone try to sit still, eat your, your uh, lollipops or whatever it is that you're eating today, carrots, hopefully. And let's jump in to how does art, art artificial intelligence work? So let's talk about which are some examples of this, mid-journey, doll e Blue Willow Night Cafe, Stable Diffusion are a few of them. And we're going to be looking specifically at Mid Journey today. So let's look at an example from my five-year-old and seven-year-old niece and nephew. And this is the first one is, is a drawn on paper. So I am working on teaching just like you little children, more children about how to use AI art because it's really fun. So my five-year-old nephew drew a volcano on a piece of paper and my, my sister uh, sent it to me. We were doing this remotely. And so first of all, you have to have an idea. So a human child, just like you, can come up with a fun idea and you draw it on paper. And then after you draw it on paper, then we would turn it into text. But let me look at my niece who drew this mouse. So you basically have these two pictures and we're gonna turn them into text. The way that these AI systems work is you have to have an interface with them. And with MidJourney, we use a system called Discord. Discord is a chat system. All right. So we have to turn this image into text. So we looked at it, my nephew and I looked at it together and described it. So he, some of the things, some of the elements, I couldn't tell what they were. For example, I didn't know, you know, this is a boat. And so he said, yes, this is a boat. And then I didn't know what that was. And that's a Jeep that's stuck in the lava. So he helped me figure out to how to describe this. Now this is called prompt generation. And prompt generation is very, complicated, it's becoming its own science and art. And you wanna have as much descriptive words as possible, right? So this is a volcano on an island with a boat in the foreground. So ha having words like foreground and background and colors is really important. You wanna use as many descriptive words as possible. And we have a Jeep stuck in the lava. All right, now let's look at my niece. So this is a brown mouse eating yellow Swiss cheese. So let's look at what the computer came up. We typed those words exactly with the prompt called imagine with that's how the system in um, discord works. And I'll just show you exactly what that looks like. So I typed imagine this and it then showed me this. So you can see there's a boat and the, you know, they give you four versions. So this is the way almost all these work. They give you four versions of the prompt and you can pick which one you like and you can make it bigger. So it's interesting how, it, you know, they don't always do exactly what you want. And this is with a conversation which I had with my niece and nephew 
on what's the difference between the original art piece and the one that the AI art system generated. All right, so that's an example. And let's look at what my niece came up with. So that's the mouse. And we came up with two different versions. She, she first came up with this one, but it didn't look very cartoon-like. She actually wanted to be a cartoon mouse. So I rewrote the prompt and then it came up with these more cartoon mouses. Nice. All right, so let's talk about how this thing works. Artificial intelligence AI learns just like your dog does. So pets learn from repeated patterns. So when you have a puppy and you're trained to sit, you demonstrate it by pressing its little hind legs down and you say the word sit. And once it's seated, seated you give it a little treat. And then you test, right? You say like, let's see if this little puppy learns. And you say sit. And if it doesn't sit, then you push it down and then you give it the treat with the word sit. So you have to completely to retrain over and over, pushing them down, telling the word sit, and then giving them the treat. You have to repeat this over and over. And sometimes it's weeks before they understand, but eventually they'll be able to sit without you pressing their hand, their little um, rear end down, and then you give them the treat. So that's how we treat, we, we train pets. And this is exactly the same way that we train an AI art system. So you demonstrate the action, such as draw a blue dragon by showing it lots of existing examples of blue dragons. And then you ask it to draw a blue dragon. If it draws you a blue dragon, just like you wanted it to, then you give it a signal. AIs don't take treats, but they do have a little signal that says, good job, you did it right. So humans have to label these images. So this is really important to understand that these systems don't learn on their own. They have to have images that are labeled by humans. So you can see three examples. We have a red apple, we have a purple plum, and we have an orange sunset. So the labeling of, of images has been done for 20 years, whatever it is that we've been using the internet, we've been labeling these images and captioning them. So then AI sees thousands of examples, really probably hundreds of millions of examples of images with that same caption. So these are all images that were captioned with orange sunset. These are all images that were captured, captioned with red, um, purple plum. And you want to have different angles, shapes, versions, so that the AI systems gradually starts understanding like, oh, purple plums, there are lots of variations. And it learns with lots of repetition. And you notice here that sometimes the AIs make mistakes. And for example, this is not a red apple. This was a green apple and that's a yellow apple. So sometimes labels are uh, incorrect and so we can have mistakes. Also, just remember that this is all history. All the things we're training these systems on is history. Uh, AIs can't imagine things that are new and, and, and humans can imagine things that are new. So we need to just use these tools. All right, so today I've gone over in a very simple way how to do this. And let me at a real live demo. Now anything could happen. So please somebody from the audience, one of these five beautiful five-year-olds in the audience that we have today, somebody tell me a prompt and I will type it into the system and we can see together what the system creates for us. So who wants to give us an imagination? I, I, I do. All right, let's hear it, Darren. A red dragon with uh, with red dragon um, putting out green fire. Okay, red dragon uh, spitting out green fire. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is always copy your prompt in case you typed it wrong. So is there anything in the foreground? Is it flying? Is it about with flying. a castle? Yes. Flying? Yes. What color is the sky? Uh, gray. OK. Is it above mountains, ocean? Above the ocean. OK. Is it peaceful ocean or a stormy ocean? Stormy ocean. 
So you see, you really want to put a lot of description, and this is where the human imagination is still here. These AI tools are not just doing anything. We as humans need to bring a lot of imagination in and, and uh, you know, play with this. All right, so it takes a few moments for the system to create the image. And you can see it starts slowly and gets a little more clear over time. And then once it's created, I'll just show you while we're waiting for this one, you can create variations and versions of the system and make them more clear or blow them up or modify. The real cool thing is if you take it into Photoshop and do a lot more. All right, there you go. So it's not spitting any green fire, which is a disappointment, but maybe we just needed to make a different prompt to make it more clear to the system. All right, and that concludes my presentation today. So all you five-year-olds, it's time for nap time now. Thank you all.